first of all, we need to explore the concept of signaling. Now, signaling is a term used for all kinds of signals, whether that be alerting, addressing, supervisory signals, etc., or even data communications. The word signaling is used to indicate that there is some activity in that regard. Furthermore, signaling can be in band or out of band, and when in band, that signaling forms part of the data stream. When it's out of band, it is some other means of conveying information than the data stream. Now, when I talk about data stream, as I am communicating with you, I am using a data stream that is relayed via the internet and that reach you in the form of audio. Right, that's a data stream. When I send the chat box and the raise of hands along with that data stream in the same channel, then I'm using in-band signaling. Right, so we are currently using in-band signaling to, and I see there's a correct mark there, Dominique. Um, we are currently using in-band signaling to indicate uh, the raise of hands, etc. The other concept is that of a circuit, and whenever you have a successful electronic circuit, you have the means to convey information or convey energy. And please note that energy, the term mostly used for electrical uh, heavy current connections, um, is also a form of communication, or stated the other way around, you can communicate by using energy. And now what is worse is that you cannot communicate without energy. Therefore, whenever you are using a circuit to communicate, a channel to communicate, and we'll look at the channel in a second, you are using energy to convey information, right? So don't think that electrical energy is something out there that's got nothing to do with communications. Uh, Warata, your hand is up. I'm gonna give you the floor and give you the microphone. There you go. We look at a channel. Now a channel is a logical communications path and uh, we can have more than one channel per circuit. And currently, I'm on a multi-channel um, circuit communicating to you because I'm using a normal telephone connection between my telco and, 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 and my office. And on that line, there are both the possibility of a telephone call and of data being transacted simultaneously. So it is one circuit, one pair of copper wires, but multiple channels. And that is the concept that you need to understand that you can have more than one channel on a single circuit, and we are currently using such a setup. The term last mile is used for the very last part of a connection to customer equipment or customer premises. And that's actually more used in the telephone or the telephony environment than it's ever used in the industrial environment. But that is just when you encounter that term that you understand. Trunk is the term used for a, a selection of circuits, a group of circuits or a group of channels that is transformed after a relay trans. The, the term just slipped my mind, transmitted on a group of circuits is called the trunk. Now a trunk is usually a, a, a quite a big grouping of channels together and on a trunk circuit you can have quite a lot of communications going on simultaneously between different endpoints, not necessarily the same endpoints, but the trunk is a circuit used for mass communication. Continuing from there, you will have the concept of bandwidth. Now, whenever you have a channel 
that channel will have a certain bandwidth and it is defined as the frequency that is available between the two points where the signal is attenuated by minus 3 dB. Now the concept of dBs I don't have the time to explain now but that is in fact the point where only half of the energy that is transmitted or the power that is transmitted reaches the destination. So between frequency on the left hand side and the frequency on the right hand side where the intensity is attenuated by 3 dBs there is a bandwidth, a part of the frequency spectrum that you may use for your communications. Now that bandwidth determines the channel capacity. The channel capacity is a maximum theoretical data transfer capacity of any transmission channel and the, the bandwidth plays a central role in this. You will see at the bottom there a guy named Shannon posted the formulation that says that the capacity of any channel to convey data is 2 times B, the bandwidth of the channel in Hertz and actually in this specific case it must be megahertz log to a radix of 2 of the amount of megabits per second. Right, so that gives you the relationship between the channel's bandwidth and the channel's capacity in megabits per second. Right, and in the end a channel is limited by that theoretical limit and whatever means you use to convey the information over that channel will probably not reach the theoretical maximum. You will be bound to a little less than that. Also on the topic of transmission, you can have simplex transmission which is a transmission that you typically see in FM radio systems. You have got let's say a community FM transmitter and it transmits a voice channel from a central station to a large range of receivers. But there's no talking back from the receivers. It's a one-way conversation only and that is called the simplex transmission. Half duplex on the other hand has the possibility of a talkback, but it's either the talkback or the, the, the forward transmission taking place, not both at the same moment. When you can have both at the same moment, both receive and transmit at the same moment on the channel, you've got a full duplex communication system. Now, in the sense that we are running today, we've got a half duplex transmission system because I can talk to you when I've got the microphone and you can talk to us when you've got the microphone but we cannot both talk simultaneously so it's a half duplex communication system. And there's just some pictures helping you to understand. Simplex communication is typically when someone yells at someone else. The guy at the other end just listens and this guy continues yelling at him. It's a one-way communication. When only one person can speak and the other can listen at any moment, then you've got the typical scenario that is shown on the screen here. And you all know when you were kids, the game we played by having a piece of string between two terms, and one guy can speak, the other places into his ear and can listen. And you can swap around, sure but that's a half to text communication system. And then the little bubble on the right hand side saying don't speak twice once upon a time, that's very bad English. But it's designed to help you remember what half to text is. You can speak both ways but only one way at a time. Full to text communications can can, can speak to both directions simultaneously and the normal telephone conversation is a beautiful example of full duplex communications.
Right. Now, in order to convey information, uh, there's a request for the microphone. I'm going to hand over. Hi, Donnie. <coughs> um, I just want to make sure on the on the bandwidth on the two slides back. Um, on the with the Shannon theorem. Um, does that take into account uh, um, when you have something like quadrature amplitude modulation where you have one change in signal but it can represent more than one uh, uh, bit of data? Uh, Dion, yes, it does take it into account because the M in that um, equation, and I've misread it a while ago, I must apologize because I said then that it must be um, the channel capacity in megabits per second because the hertz is in, or oh, oh, I saw the M thinking it was mega. But in fact the M is the discrete levels used for each signaling element. Therefore if you use quaternary encoding, your M is becoming uh, four, the figure four. So the log to the radix of two of the figure four is uh, two, so you've got four times your bandwidth, which would be the maximum capacity theoretically. So yes, it does take it into account, and I must apologize for presenting that incorrectly to you. There must actually be a space between the M and the bits per second because the C is measured, the channel capacity in bits per second, but the M is meant to be the amount of discrete levels used for each signaling element. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. We will again continue where I've left off, uh, which will be at the full duplex communications, right? And now you've got two modes of communications being baseband communication, uh, analog or baseband communication, digital. And you can take either of those and modulate it onto a radio frequency stream. The difference being that when you've got baseband modulation, you are not transmitting it on a radio frequency. You are merely taking the digital or the analog information and you are converting it to another format. But then that converted format can be posted onto a radio frequency carrier when you will have RF modulation. Before that, it is still in baseband modulation. There's several well-known analog modulation techniques such as amplitude and frequency and uh, phase modulation. Frequency modulation will be FM. You've all heard your radios being FM radios. You've all heard the old style shortwave radios being amplitude modulation. And that's things that you have encountered and know about. At the bottom, you've got your digital modulation technique, which is now something else. You don't have an analog signal. It's not a signal. Um, ranging from zero to maximum with all the infinite states in between. It's a finite state signal. In other words, it's a zero or a one or a series of zeros or ones. It's digital information and we wish to convey that. And you've got options such as pulse code modulation, width modulation, uh, amplitude as well, uh, position modulation. There's, there's quite a few of these options in digital modulation. And you can then add that to radio frequency modulation and transmit the information. This slide, I must admit, is not 100% accurate in the way that the information is presented. 